believe it or not, the mold that I used to make this bookend was just a simple latex glove. And since I have yet to make its counterpart for the other side so that the set can do this with my books, I'll take you through the process of making one. I think this project can be a lot of fun if you have the right stuff. So I want to go over all the things that you'll probably have to get and you likely don't have sitting around the house. The base was removed from this piece of black walnut, which is my personal favorite, and the finish is teak oil. We will return shortly to the woodworking because I'm going to get the other base out of this piece. A latex glove. Not difficult to find. 6,000 count BBs. Also not difficult to find. It's about five bucks, I think, five or six dollars. Two part epoxy. I like it in this double syringe. I am not endorsing any specific brand. This is the cheapest stuff they have. It's like two bucks for one of these and you'll probably need about three of them, maybe four. This is a general purpose, five minute set, translucent yellow. And I also recommend making a base. If you store it upright, it allows the air bubbles to come to the top. And then when you're trying to dispense the epoxy, it doesn't have air in it that compresses. So both tubes will release equal amounts of the liquid. This is a silicone basting brush, $1 at the dollar store. And this is a silicone beaker one dollar at the dollar store. And through some miracle of science, epoxy doesn't stick to silicone. This is a homemade mixing device made from copper wire, and that feature keeps it from getting epoxy on everything. Our hand needs a stand, and for that I'm using clay, like the kind of regular old clay used in ceramics. I actually dug this clay out of a hillside somewhere. But if for some reason you don't have access to one of the most common building materials on earth, then uh, find a sandbag or some other clever device that you can use to support your hand while the epoxy cures. And by the way, the thing that I'm using to cut the clay with, it's just a piece of fishing line. It's tied on each end to a piece of PVC. That looks about right. Now you might be thinking of suggesting to me, why not just use your hand to make a hand-shaped impression in the clay, and I think I tried that last time and just found it to be too cumbersome. Moving right along, let's measure out about a cup. By mass, that would be about 1,200 grams. We will be using this for our first casting and the rest we can set aside. You may want to check your BBs to see if they have any machine oil on them or anything that would prevent the epoxy from bonding to them. Mine did not. Okay, I think I'm ready. I'm as prepared as I can possibly be. I'm sure I'll forget something that's pretty much standard. I've washed and dried the rubber glove just so that any powder that's inside is gone and this is key the BBs have to be heated up heat is key and that's why I'm keeping the heat gun on standby if the BBs are cold the epoxy won't stick to them well so when you heat up epoxy it becomes watery thin and if the BBs are already hot, then it will spread over them beautifully. Okay, let's go. Warm BBs, that's as cool as it is strange.
I'm going to use not quite the entire tube. Last time I used the entire thing and it was a bit much. And we are now on the clock. Well, the first casting of the second hand was a complete success so far, but now rigor mortis is starting to set in. And so my job is to just slowly make tiny adjustments as I see fit over the course of the next half hour. It's been about five minutes since the last shot and it's stiffening up, but I had to remove that there was a crease, kind of a fold, and I wanted to pull whatever latex was trapped in the fold out. It's no big deal. There will be touch-ups later. And in the meantime, I found that getting the epoxy out of your silicone wear is easiest at about this time, about 10 minutes after casting. You can still get it off later with relative ease, but right now it's the easiest. It remains flexible for a long time. And I'm probably messing with it more than I should, but that's just my nature. But remember, that all five of the points should be on the same plane, ideally. So I'll just keep my eye on it for the next couple of hours. What was that I was saying about messing with it too much? Yeah, I broke my index finger in two places last night. It happened about 45 minutes after casting, so no more adjustments after about a half hour. Luckily, surgical repair is pretty easy to do. I've already fixed this one. Honestly, the whole process is creepy, so this part will be no different. The secret to the remainder of this project is in using small amounts of epoxy efficiently. Every single time that you need to mix a batch, you should mix the smallest possible amount necessary. All it should cost you is a little bit of epoxy, two toothpicks, and a small piece of masking tape. If you follow this method, you should be able to get dozens and dozens of applications out of a single thing of epoxy. Well, every finger rests where it's supposed to, except the index finger, so you can see why I broke it. It snapped like a pretzel rod. Oh well, it will be our secret.
The second layer is not entirely unexpected. What you're looking at is a thin layer of epoxy, but let's worry about this first. I'm not sure that using the wire wheel is the best way to do it, but it's the best way that I've found to do it. I didn't like the idea of using a solvent because it's messy and it might mess with the bond of the epoxy. And I did try using the sand blaster on the last one, but the sand tends to scratch the BBs too much and it discolors them. This is one of those rare cases where it helps if you switch the drill to its low speed. I'll admit to never typically using that switch, but in this case, even though the footage has sped up to 4x, it helps to go nice and slow. Now we have just a little bit of woodworking to do. When a bandsaw doesn't seem to cut well, that usually means that the blade's dull. But that's okay. The best ways to get a smooth convex curve usually involve a sander anyway. That's a theme that I'll return to. It seems like a basic enough shape at first glance, but take a close look at it. I actually shaped it by cutting it down some on this end to give it a more organic appearance. I want to make a gentle curve that blends from here down to here at the lowest point. I'm sculpting it down in this direction, but I'm also sculpting it down in this direction as well. So what results is this line. And it's pretty easy to keep that line nice and straight, but eventually I'll round it over when I'm satisfied with its shape. It might seem counterintuitive, but sometimes you can get the cleanest curves from a straight edge. This sander on the lathe moves quite a bit slower so I can knock these corners down with a little more control. Lucky me! I get to spend the next hour or so sanding this. I'll spare you that part of the process, but a word about it. Remember what I was saying about a curved surface and a flat edge? I'm going to do exactly that in order to finish shaping this. I have a 100 grit sanding block here, and I'll use that to knock off the high spots. When I'm done, I'll finish sanding with these four grades of sandpaper. Wow, that was great. Too bad you couldn't have been here to enjoy that with me. Eh, I don't blame you for only sticking around for the good parts. That will be shiny enough. Let's move on.
Sometimes these cheap countersinks will chatter. If it does that, just run it backwards. Oh, relax, I knew it wasn't going to hit my finger. Four of my fingers are in contact with the glass. If you're good, all five of yours will be. And this is square and straight and centered on my grid. I usually start to grow impatient as the end of a project nears. And this project's been no exception, so I accidentally put the screws in too high. I'll give you a better view in a moment. But I lowered them and added another. But I want to mention that any BBs that are in the way can easily be popped off. Take a look at it in comparison to the old one, and it's easy to tell that the screws were up too high before. We want them to be in the center of the hand, ideally. So next, we will work on filling in these BBs here. And now, the rest of this process, just a little bit at a time. We can always add more later. Now I will just keep adding just a few at a time, every 10 or 15 minutes, trying to fill that void. Reinforcing the screw threads with some extra epoxy will fill in the air spaces and help make this much stronger. We want gravity to work in our favor. The BBs flow kind of like a dripping honey that starts to freeze after about five minutes. Some final details on the shape, and it's on to the last step, the top coat. Finally, we've made it, boys and girls, to the fun part. This part should not be stressful, and to help ensure that, I've covered all of my wood to protect it from the epoxy. It's worth noting that the masking tape doesn't come in contact with the wood itself. It just kind of floats there. Remember, you want to keep the metal nice and warm to keep the epoxy thin. I ended up using the heat gun quite a bit. Of course, you can apply as much epoxy as you want in this way. It will only make the final product stronger. And it also looks cool when it gets drippy looking. There it is, all done. This one was satisfying in a bizarre sort of way, wasn't it? I'm sure you could tell from the footage. It was kind of fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you'll join me next time.